Welcome back to Network Africa. The United Nations has begun distributing food in famine-hit parts of South Sudan, where an estimated 100,000 people are facing starvation. Last week, the United Nations declared that parts of South Sudan are experiencing famine, the first time the world has faced such a catastrophe in six years. According to the United Nations, some 5.5 million people, nearly half the population, will not have a reliable source of food by July. Analysts say the disaster is largely man-made as all read South Sudan, the world's youngest nation, was plunged into civil war in 2013 after President Salva Kiir fired his deputy, Rick Makar. Since then, the conflict has increasingly split the country along ethnic lines, leading the UN to warn of a potential genocide. The fighting has prevented many farmers from harvesting their crops, and hyperinflation, which reached more than 800 percent last year, has put the price of imported food beyond the reach of many. Since the fighting started, the little we get, we give to the children and the elderly, so we will be left with nothing. There are no men around. We, the women, are the ones struggling to take care of the families. What is hurting us a lot since the fighting started is that we are living in fear. Any time, morning or evening, we are afraid of being taken away. The United Nations said on Tuesday that the existing violence has slowed down the humanitarian response and is restricting aid access to some areas. Both uh, the government officials as well as the opposition leaders in this location, uh, they are committed now to ensuring that you know our peace is sustained. And you know, based on that discussion, we have agreed that you know what has prevented us from responding in this location in the past is because of the fighting and insecurity. We need to have yeah, safety and security in this location before we can come back to do the distribution as we're going to do now, but more importantly, to be able to establish much longer uh, term activity. Over 300,000 South Sudanese refugees have sought refuge in Sudan including about 131,000 in 2016. More than 80% of the latest arrivals were women and children. The fighting has also uprooted more than 3 million people, and the United Nations says continuing displacement presented heightened risks of prolonged food underproduction into 2018. In the fighting, food warehouses have been looted and aid workers killed. South Sudan is rich in oil resources, but six years after independence from neighboring Sudan, there are only 200 kilometers of paved roads in a nation with an area of over 600 square kilometers. In North Africa, Egypt's former president, Hoshni Mubarak, has denied any involvement in the killing of protesters during the 2011 uprising that ended his 30-year rule. 88-year-old Mubarak was originally sentenced to life in prison in 2012 for conspiring to murder 239 demonstrators, sowing chaos and creating a security vacuum during an 18-day revolt which began in January 2011, but an appeals court ordered a retrial. Now that retrial culminated in 2014 in an Egyptian court dropping the case, but the public prosecution appealed the decision and ordered another trial, another retrial, by Egypt's top appeals court. That trial began today with the judge reading Mubarak the charges in which he and his interior ministers were accused of providing vehicles and weapons used to assault protesters and failing to take action to prevent deaths. Mr. Mubarak has long maintained his innocence in the case and has said history will judge him as a patriot who served his country selflessly. Two Kenyan teachers have been kidnapped from the Dadaab refugee camp near the Somali border. They were reportedly abducted by unidentified gunmen overnight and driven towards the border. Last month, the High Court in Nairobi blocked an attempt by the Kenyan government to close down Dadaab, saying the move is unconstitutional. The government has described the camp, which is the largest in the world, as a breeding ground for terrorists. It has attacks on its soil by the Somalia-based Al-Shabaab Islamist group have been planned in Dadaab. 
An army warm outbreak, the first emergence of the pest in southern Africa, is causing considerable crop damage in some countries. Officials say if the pest damage aggravates, it could dampen prospects for the good crop harvest that is anticipated in the current farming season. These are not happy times for Zimbabwean farmers facing a threat from the army worm, a pest that consumes vast fields of crops if left unchecked. They march across the landscape in large groups while in the caterpillar stage, feasting on young maize plants and wiping out entire fields. The government has set a target of 2 million tons of maize this year after a devastating drought in 2016. But if the pest damage continues, it could dampen prospects for good crop harvest that is anticipated in the current farming season. Luxon Zembe is a farm owner in East Anglia, 25 kilometers outside from Harare. It is a challenge. Firstly, it's new. And number two, as I said, the challenge of its velocity, how it spreads so fast. Number three, its resistance to the normal chemicals that we use with stock, bro stock borer and other pests that we, we normally deal with. So it's a big challenge that is, you know, if it is not contained, it can reverse all the gains that we have in terms of resuscitating our agricultural production and especially food security in Zimbabwe. Southern Africa is reeling from the effect of two consecutive years of El Nino-induced drought that affected over 40 million people. I think an aspect of the four armyworm which we need to emphasize is the fact that is it attacks a lot of other crops in addition to grasses. It attacks sorghums and millets, it attacks rice, it attacks groundnuts, soybeans, cowpeas, as well as cotton. This actually means that uh, in terms of trying to, to reduce the pest pressure from one summer crop to another, we know that even in the winter there are other crops on which it can survive. So essentially in developing uh, control strategies, we have to be mindful of the, the fact that it can survive on so many other crops. Analysts also say that the army worm could become resistant to chemicals if farmers do not correctly apply the pesticide. Zambia, Zimbabwe's northern neighbor and major maize producer, has started a campaign aimed at stemming the army worm, which has affected 124,000 hectares of maize in the country. Eritrea has rejected reports that it was behind a foiled plot to attack Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam project. Earlier, the Ethiopian government said it killed 13 members of a rebel group sponsored by Eritrea who were planning to attack the vast infrastructure project. But Eritrean Information Minister Yemani Gebremeskel says, quote, this whole ac accusation is preposterous and peddled for some sinister reason, end of quote. The minister also added that he had never heard of the rebel group accused of planning the attack. Eritrea gained independence from Ethiopia 25 years ago and the two countries fought a border war between 1998 to 2000, in which about 80,000 people are believed to have died. And that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Topwe Fagbini.